Look out. There's a few cabins that Virgin Voyages charges a premium for, and most people are upset when they get them. These cabins are not advertised, and you don't want to get stuck with them. Which cabins are these? Stay tuned. Hello, cabins. We just got back from a seven-day sailing on Virgin Voyages Valiant Lady. The sailing was a private charter and a lot of the things that you normally see on a virgin sailing were not there. Pajamas for the PJ party. There was no Scarlet Night with people dressed in red. Instead, we got a white night where the dress attire was white. Being on a Virgin Voyages ship without a Scarlet Knight was just plain weird. We got special entertainment on board like Lauren Allred, the singer that sang the songs in the movie The Greatest Showman, for two special performances inside the Red Room which were pretty awesome. Because the sailing was so unique, it was an opportunity for me to actually relax on a cruise and not worry about filming too much during a trip. This was my sixth sailing on Virgin Voyages in the last two years, and while I've covered most of the things about Virgin on previous videos, this was our first time in an extra large sea terrace, and I wanted to make a very quick video about this terrace and why you need to be careful booking it. Most cabins on Virgin have balconies, though Virgin calls them terraces, and 93% of the staterooms have ocean views. You'll find 46 cabins dedicated for solo travelers on Virgin, mostly inside staterooms, and 10 accessible rooms across multiple categories. When you search for sea terrace cabins, you will see multiple choices. Lock-in rate, limited view sea terrace is the cheapest cabin with a balcony. You won't get your cabin assigned until close to your sailing date, and there's a good chance you will have a terrace with a partial block view. This is a sacrifice you take for accepting the cheapest option here. The other terrace options are mostly priced based on the location of the ship with midship being the most desired and costly of the options. If you're prone to seasickness or you think you might be, then choosing one of these cabins is probably your best option. Finally, you will see the extra large sea terrace which is what we had on this sailing and these sometimes have a big markup in price from the rest of the sea terrace. These are advertised to have 30% more living space than a regular sea terrace at 225 square feet for the cabin. The main reason we wanted one is for the much larger bathroom. The bathrooms in a sea terrace are extremely small. The small bathrooms still allow for a good sized shower, but you sacrifice sink and vanity space. There's not much space for two people to keep their toiletries and getting ready in the bathroom can be very tight. The extra large sea terrace features a much larger walk-in bathroom and a separate shower and bathroom, each having its own door making it much easier for someone to shower while the other person gets ready. One thing to note that you can see at the top of this video is that the doors don't go all the way up. So if you're using the restroom, your roommate can hear what is going on since the bathroom doesn't have a fully private door like a regular sea terrace bathroom does. Different cabins, we were hoping to get extra large sea terrace because this is kind of tight. Can I turn on the light? There. Uh, there's not much counter space here, but um, it gets a little bit tight. That's one of the negatives, but other than that, the cabin's decent. For me, the extra space of the extra large sea terrace was well worth it, but Joel did not care for the lack of privacy in these bathrooms. Now, the big issue with the cabin and the reason I wanted to make this video is that if you're not careful, you might not get the type of cabin you think you're getting. All the extra large sea terrace cabins are in the front of the ship. Virgin advertises hammocks and terraces heavily in their ads, including the description of the cabin when you book a cabin. The problem is that not all extra large sea terraces have a hammock or great view of the ocean. While most sea terrace cabins have hammocks and glass railings, some extra large sea terraces located towards the front have a steel railing that blocks the view of the ocean from your cabin. Even worse, the cabins lack the hammocks you see on the ads, and instead you have some bird cage chairs that don't give you views of the ocean unless you stand up. When you book online, you don't have a choice to select your cabin on Virgin. Your only option is to call Virgin after you 
book and request a cabin with a hammock or go with a cruise travel advisor that can select a cabin for you. Now, how can you tell if you have one of these cabins? Well, Virgin doesn't do a good job of identifying these cabins. I've put a list of cabins that are known to not have the hammocks in the description below. If you're currently booked on Virgin in an extra large sea terrace, make sure you're not in one of these cabins, unless of course you fancy the setup better than the regular cabins. From my experience, most people are extremely disappointed when they get on board and see they were booked in one of these cabins since pictures of them are not provided by Virgin. I've seen reports of people getting $50 on board credit when they complain to Sailor Services. To me, this is one big issue to be aware of, especially since you're paying a premium for these cabins. They're also a long walk from the galley, which was a little bit disappointing for us. One final note on all cabins on Virgin. Most people find the beds to be really hard or firm. You can request your cabin attendant to add some padding to the mattress, which helps but for me, it's still very hard for my liking. On this sailing, I actually bought this memory foam topper on Amazon for just over $20 and brought it with me and it made a huge difference in my sleep. Afterwards, I just left it for the cabin attendant to use for his personal cabin, which he greatly appreciated. So this is almost a, a must, I think, especially if you have like cameras and all sort of things. So you can bring a power strip, but he cannot have a surge protector. It'll get confiscated and it's also like a fire risk so this is found on amazon for like 10 bucks does not have a surge protector and i can connect it here and connect all my devices this is a must i also have these rooms kind of get hot and i like to have a little bit of noise and this little fan you can get on amazon also just connects down here uh, let's see connect 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 And it is actually pretty strong. Let's push the button. It's on right now, so it feels really good. I like to keep this right here as I sleep. And on throughout the day, as it circulates air throughout the cabin, it really makes a big difference. I hope this short video is very helpful for you in making sure you have the perfect cabin selected on Virgin Voyages. If you like content like this, please subscribe to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching.